So this is how I reinforce the bench with some threaded rod and epoxy. What you see now on the bottom of the bench are three slots that I previously milled with a, I used a router. They're a half inch wide by a half inch deep. And what I'm doing now is uh, cutting the length and determining the length of the 3 8 threaded rod. So I just stuck it in one end and marked the other end with some blue tape. Just some re relative dimensioning. I really have no idea how long it actually is. But uh, I marked it so that it's it's about a quarter inch shorter than the slot. It doesn't need to take up the exact space. You don't want to jam it in there. So now I'm clamping it down nice and tight. I'm using uh, my hacksaw, which is a little 12 volt cordless hacksaw to cut the thread rod. Uh, regular hacksaw will do just fine. <clears throat> and you don't have to worry about cleaning up the threads because the reason we're using threaded rod here is not so we can tie something on, but uh, at least in my thought, the threaded rod bites to the epoxy much better than a smooth threaded shank would. So now you can see I just dropped it in and it fills up the whole slot and leaves just a little bit of space at the end. Now this is a plastic shim and what I'm doing here is cutting off just the bottom of the shim because I want just this thin little space and I cut that into a couple of small squares. What I'm going to do here is drop those little pieces of shim evenly along the slot before I put the epoxy in and that'll hold the threaded rod up just a little bit so that the epoxy goes underneath it. So I drop those tabs in first and then I start mixing the epoxy as you can see here. I'm using the Gorilla Glue 5 minute epoxy. I find it's really easy to mix, very strong and though you don't see it here because I'm using so many containers of it, this is a lot of epoxy. Um, one of the nice things about the Gorilla Glue is that you can put the, the lid back on and reuse the container and I've gotten a single container to last me probably six to eight weeks and I'm guessing it could last a bit longer. I just I tend to use it now and then so it doesn't last that long in the shop. But once I've put the whole thing in the little plastic cup, a little mixing, a little mixing, a little more mixing, and once I get it mixed up, then I'm just going to begin to pour it right into the slot. And using the wooden mixer, I'm kind of bringing it in. The trick here is to evenly coat the bottom of the slot. I tended to put a little bit too much in, as you'll see here in this shot that shows me pouring it right in. I could be moving much faster and get away with much less. Uh, because the threaded rod takes up much of the volume of the slot, by filling it a little bit past the halfway point now, I'm really overfilling it. The goal here is to get enough so that w once you put the threaded rod down into the epoxy, the bottom of the threaded rod is sitting in epoxy. We don't want any air gaps to remain underneath the bottom of the threaded rod. So Again, what you see here is I'm, I'm really overfilling the slot. At the end of the day, it just makes it a little sloppier. It doesn't have any real tangible impact on performance. But I don't need to put in so much just now. And I actually ran short at the end. And uh, you can see I, I cut and had to mix another one um, to get this nice even coating along the bottom of the slot. Now I put the threaded rod in and... In this particular project, I had to leave a uh, thread rod down to one end for some joinery at the other end, so that was me just moving it to the end, and I just drop it in. And then using a little wooden mixing stick, this is the, actually the stick that came with the Gorilla Glue epoxy, I push it down into the epoxy, and I use the same stick to take the epoxy that rose up, because again, I had overfilled the slot, um, and just kind of get a nice even mix on it. So any epoxy that rises up proud of the surface, I bring back over it, and then once all that has been put down, I take another mixing of epoxy and pour it over. What I've found is I tend to go for this application to be even with the wood. And once the epoxy dries, it leaves a slightly concave surface. And the finished surface of the epoxy ends up being slightly below the wood. And I, I don't really like that because in the finishing process... I end up sanding all this, and if I sand the surface of the epoxy, I can sand it to um, to a bright sheen and a, a polish if I want, or I can just sand it, sand it to a dull finish, um, but it blends in better, I find, when I sand the surface of the epoxy. But if I underfill it at this point, I essentially go for even with the wood so that when it dries and shrinks a little bit, it's concave, then I never really get that concave surface into the sander, and I'm left having to accept whatever the surface of the epoxy was. Sometimes that's fine, sometimes it's not. In this case, 
um, the epoxy is going on the bottom of a vent, so it's going to be very hard to see, and it doesn't really make a big deal. But I would recommend putting less epoxy in the beginning than I did in this video, and putting more epoxy in at the end than I do in this video, so that it makes less of a mess during the process, but leaves a nice crown over the threaded rod, so that when you do sand down, you can control the finish. Here I'm just continuing to smooth out the epoxy that I've poured in, and I'm trying to get it even, which again, will ultimately leave it slightly concave. So there it is after all the epoxy has been applied and dried. And here it is after the first sanding, you see I cleaned it all up. There's the finished bench, and those rods run underneath the bottom so that when someone sits on it, it doesn't snap. And there's the undershot, so you can see what the underside looks like after finish.